Hey, fellas. Welcome back to another episode here at the Bancor. Really excited to be with you today. We are going to be covering a topic that is pretty near and dear to my heart and uh, something that I would highly recommend anybody look into and consider, and that is the alkaline diet. So we talk a lot about um, our physical health, our, emo our emotional health, uh, better relationships, masculinity, and uh, you know, part of really becoming the best version of ourselves is, is feeling good and, and being proud of, uh, of the body that we've constructed and uh, the hard work that we've been putting in, whether that's in the gym or uh, if we're being uh, more mindful. But you know, just having a, a better vibrant uh, feeling about yourself and, and about life in general is gonna make you more of an attractive person. It's gonna make your body stronger. It's gonna make you uh, think quicker and think more on your feet and this is an area that I incorporated about two years ago that I have really learned a lot from. And though I have deviated from it, uh, you know, every time that I've gone back, I've always wondered why I even left it. It's something that <clears throat> I've seen such good results from. So we're going to go over really the premise of the alkaline diet and, um, you know, the, the benefits of it and a couple of examples of you know, the ones, foods that are foods and, and drinks that are more alkaline and the flip side, which is more acidic. And also stay tuned to the end of the video because I have a concept that will really help, uh, you know, drive this point home. You know, there's a lot of uh, different diets and there's a lot of different things out there that you can find on the internet. And this isn't really a diet as much as I see it uh, being a lifestyle and uh, just a few moderate changes. And I think it will really open your eyes, especially if you, uh, if you start to do it and you actually feel the results. So that's gonna be the true test. But you know, there's a lot of uh, different things that you can look into. And you know, there's a concept at the end of this video that I think will really help uh, cement this in for you. And you know, I know it's something that uh, you've seen in, in everyday life. So uh, stay tuned to the end and, and we'll, uh, we'll cover that concept. So, <clears throat> What is the alkaline diet and, and what does it really mean? What is the whole premise concept? So if you remember back in science class, pH was like the, you know, you, you kind of remember the, the pH scale. So zero to 14, zero being very acidic, seven being neutral or where water is, and then 14 where, uh, you know, that is the most alkaline side of the scale. Well, in those, in science class, you didn't really talk about how it correlated to how, how it related to your diet, essentially, at least I didn't. So um, I had heard it before, I'm familiar with it, and you know, I, I, wanted, I was interested to see how it, I was interested to see how it would benefit my diet, right? So to give you an example and to, to, and to really, you know, drive this home, the, the body is acidic by function. The body's mostly acidic by function. This is all of us mostly acidic by function, and it is alkaline by design. So think about that. Acidic by function means if you, you know, think of your stomach acid, right? So it's not like when you eat food, there's like stuff in there that's churning it up or, you know, grinding it up or whatever. It's, it's acid that's doing that, right? So it's, it's powerful enough to, to actually chew it up so that you can pass it, digest it, and uh, it, it moves through your body. Well, that's the acidic function of our bodies. And in order for us to be balanced, you know, most of the time, you know, most commonly the, the diet that we have, the diet that we ha eat is, is actually very acidic. If you're not paying attention to it, I mean, even I was eating really acidic stuff and not even really paying attention to it. So if you think about that, if you're not balancing out those levels, if your body's already acidic by function, and then you're, you're adding to that acidity, you're adding to that acid by eating a very acidic diet, what you're doing is you're creating an environment in your body where microorganisms and you know, cancer-causing things to, to really thrive in. So they can really thrive in an environment that's very acidic. That is an environment that they love, that they, that they eat well in, that they thrive, that they grow and they build in. So that's something to, to really pay attention to and to really be weary of if your body's already acidic by function and then on top of that, you're eating an acidic diet. 
So I'm gonna go through some examples of things that are very uh, alkaline based and good for you know neutralizing the acidic side of your diet. And it's not, it, they're not huge changes. I was kind of a little intimidated, but they're really not huge changes and you will really notice a big impact. So uh, the way that I do it is, you know, it's hard for me to like go out and just buy raw broccoli and eat fucking just raw cucumbers. Like I think like most people, if you're like me, that's not really something that I'm, I wanna do, but I do wanna take advantage of the health benefits of it. So what I do is I actually have a juicer. It's a, it's a, it's a two grind, like a twin gear juicer. And I'll put a link to um, my particular model in the notes below. They, they are a little pricey and you know, it's just a way for you to be able to get all the nutrients, all the vegetables, all the fruits that you need without having to go and buy like, and, and eat like raw broccoli and you know, celery and just eat like a fucking rabbit all day. Like it's a really good way to, to take advantage of the health benefits, get what you need, but not, you know, have to, you know, eat grass all day. <laughs> so now again, think of this as, as a scale. I have some notes here, so I'm going to, I'm going to refer to these. But think of this as a scale being, again, zero, being very acidic or all, like all acidic, seven being right in the middle, so that's water, seven, and then 14 is very, very alkaline, okay? So think of that scale, and we're going to start at the top, and I'm going to go through a couple of examples of, of different foods that are high in alkaline, and we'll work our way down towards, towards acidic. So, and keep in mind, you know, most of the time it's le green leafy vegetables. If it's green... And if it's close to raw, you're good to go. The further that you move away from that, you're gonna have trouble. So here we go. Raw spinach, that's kind of a no-brainer, right? Uh, green leafy vegetables. Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, alfalfa grass, seaweeds, raw broccoli, carrots, cucumbers, asparagus, artichokes, raw celery, collards, lemons, and limes, which seems weird because that's, we consider that acid, but it actually digests in your body as alkaline. Those are alkaline sources. I know that's a little confusing, but trust me on this, lemons and limes are very alkaline. Moving down a step, so olive oil, raw zucchini, uh, sprouted grains, raw green beans, most lettuces, uh, though you know, I would say stick to your, to your kales and your spinach, you, you, you can't go wrong there. Um, raw peas, alfalfa, alfalfa sprouts, um, and then getting into the fruit side of things. So most of the things that we've been covering have all been like all vegetables. Like I need some fruit too. So we have kiwi, uh, figs and dates, papayas, melons, uh, blueberries, sweet potatoes. That's one I mentioned before. Grapes, uh, tangerines, mangoes. Those are, those are kind of the sweeter side. If you, if you like your fruits. So you don't have to like totally let go of those. Again, we're still in the high alkaline uh, phase here. So hopefully there's some things in there that you caught that you're either already eating or that you can amplify in your diet uh, and boost the, the alkaline sources in your diet. Moving a step down, apples, tomatoes, turnips, bell peppers, pineapple, wild rices, cantaloupes, oranges, almonds, fresh corn, olives, radishes, Cherries, strawberries, honeydew, grapefruit. These are all, I mean, this is good shit. Like I would, the, most of everything that we've been eating or we've been talking about, like that's all good. You're, you're pretty much covered. Um, everybody's taste is gonna be a little bit different, but um, avocados, mushrooms, soybeans, rhubarb, apricots, peaches, and bananas. Like that's, that's a pretty good list. And again, that is, that, those are your most alkaline sources. And you probably noticed in there where I, 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 I said that there was, uh, there was raw, it had needed to be raw. So again, if it's green and if it's closer to raw, you're, you're good to go. Now, sometimes you're going to have to cook it. Just know that the more that you cook those things that I just covered, the more acidic that they're going to get. So it's, you know, it's okay. You don't have to like only do raw, but you know, as you cook the things that I just mentioned, they are going to move their way towards acidic. Okay. So then now, uh, right in the middle, so we just covered kind of 14 through seven, basically. Right in the middle, we're at seven. So what I mentioned before was seven is water, okay? So that is, that is very neutral. That is the optimum pH level. 
So if we're trying to balance out the scale, if we have zero and that is our function, and then our diet is kind of heavily towards this zero, we need to balance it out, right? So we need, we need to kind of eat over here on the, the, you know, the seven to 14. So that way our body is functioning at a balanced level at seven. Okay. So water is the, is, is, is seven. I mean, just that, that's a good way. That's an easy way to remember it. But some other uh, items that, that register as a seven are butter, uh, fresh, unsalted cream, uh, fresh and raw milk, raw cow's milk, margarine, oils, except olive. So olive oil I covered, that's, uh, that's actually a really alkaline source. But, you know, here's the key. So apart from water being seven, human blood is actually 7.365. Okay, do you remember what I said about the microorganisms and the cancer causing things uh, being a thriving environment in an acidic place? Well, if we're trying to balance everything out, our blood needs to stay at seven to, to, to make sure that those things don't enter and don't thrive in our bloodstream, okay? So very key to remember that, you know, it's water and blood are about right at seven. So we're always trying to stay in that. And the only way that you get there is by eating more alkaline. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cover the things that are gonna move away from alkaline and more towards acidic. And if you hear things in this list, this should tell you that maybe you need to take a look at replacing it with some of the things that I just mentioned at the top of the video. And there are there are one-to-one -one replacements. So if you hear similarities or if you hear things that you could trade out, I would highly recommend doing that. And again, they're not super hard changes, but we're gonna start at six and we're gonna go down to zero. So starting at six, milk, yogurt, eggs, grains, processed juices, fruit juices, soy milk, goat milk, oats, cold water fish, plums, liver, salmon, tuna, cooked spinach, coconut, cocoa, fish, oysters, moving towards the, the acidic part, okay? Moving down one, cooked beans, sugar, big one, really big one, garbanzo beans, again, butter, wheat bran, Chicken and turkey, that's a big one, especially if you're trying to you know, get a bunch of proteins. You're gonna hear a lot more proteins on this, proteins and dairies on this side of the chart. So don't let that freak you out, but just be wary of it. I'm gonna tell you how to be able to balance that as we move towards the end of the video. So canned fruit, beer, <laughs> fellas, all that beer that you're drinking, that's, uh, that's an acidic source, white rice, Black beans, cooked corn, molasses, navy beans, black beans. I think I already mentioned that one. So that's a five. And we're moving down to four where these are getting worse now. So coffee. How many of us drink coffee out there? I drink coffee every single day. So that's a tough one for me, but there's a way to balance it out. Pistachios, cranberries, wheat, popcorn. I love popcorn. That broke my heart a little bit. But it is what it is. White bread, beef, very common, right? How often do you see beef on your plate during the week? Or chicken or turkey, like I mentioned before. Prunes, peanuts, blackberries, sweetened fruit juices, and tomato sauce. Now, that kind of actually makes sense because, you know, it's very acidic. Um, they're cooked down tomatoes. I covered uh, raw, fresh tomatoes at the top. Because again, they weren't, they weren't cooked. They were more, they were close to raw. That's an alkaline source. You cook them down, you cook them to a tomato sauce, more acidic, makes sense, right? So now we're in three and here we're getting into some danger zone, right? And a lot of this stuff is gonna make sense, but again, be listening for things that, that you eat now that you could replace with stuff I met, met at the top. So lamb, shellfish, goat cheese, pasta, Tobacco smoke. Interesting, huh? If you're smoking cigarettes, or if you're putting that dip in your mouth, that is a very, very 
dangerous combination for two reasons. The obvious reasons that we know, I don't need to, I don't need to tell you about that, but it's also a very acidic source and you're putting that right in your body, right? Right in your bloodstream. Sweet and low. So we talked about coffee. So like NutraSweet and sweet and low, these are actually more acidic than even your coffee is. So if coffee were not worse enough, you're, you're adding in a, an additional level of acidity by the two sweeteners. And then what are you doing to, 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 to kind of lather it up a little bit? You're adding a dairy source. So your daily coffee every day has a very potent acidic source. Interesting, isn't it? So moving on, pork, pastries, donuts, bagels, all that shit. Soda, horrible. Pickles, lack of sleep will actually create a more acidic environment. Chocolate, equal, which is the same thing as the, uh, the NutraSweet, Sweet and Lows. Now, you're not totally um, off the hook here. I mean, I use, uh, I use Stevia, which that's actually an alkaline source. That's a, that's a mostly alka alkaline source. It's a little bit more expensive, but um, I, you know, I'm already drinking coffee and you know, I wanna make sure that I'm not like going crazy. So Stevia, you're good with. So switch your sweet and low or your NutraSweet or your equal for Stevia packets. That's a big one. Processed foods, I think that's a given, right? Wine, hugely acidic. Cheese, black tea, stress. That goes along with lack of sleep. If you're overworking your body or overworking yourself, overwork is one here. Vinegar. Aspartame, so again, there's the sweeteners. The stevia you're good with. And then any microwave foods, you're moving it towards a more acidic source. So, I'd love to hear your comments about what you're eating now, what is standing out to you, what's acidic, what's alkaline, what you think you could replace. Please share your comments, I, I definitely wanna hear that. But, you know, colas, that's even worse. So that's even off the charts. It's, that goes lower than a three here. I, I could go even worse, but, you know, colas are off the charts. So your pops and your sodas, fellas, you got to kick that shit. Um, so I hope some of that stuff what really stood out to you. Now, keep in mind that it takes 20 parts of alkalinity to, to neutralize one part acid. Okay? 20 parts alkalinity to neutralize one part's acid. So if we're trying to get to seven, then we need to keep in mind that 80% of our plate, 80% of our diet needs to actually be alkaline sources because we're already acidic by function. And if you are not willing to let go of some of the things that I mentioned towards the bottom, because it's all about balance. I don't want you to, to, to feel like you can't eat any of these things. I still drink coffee most every day. So, and some of the things below. What I'm saying here is 20% of what you're eating and drinking, it's okay if it's an acidic source, provided that 80% of what you're eating or drinking is an alkaline source. And why is that? Well, again, 20 parts alkalinity neutralizes one part acid. So do the math, which I'm shitty at, but it's true. If that's the case, 80% of what you're eating and drinking has to be alkaline so that you get your blood back to a neutral state of seven where cancer causing microorganisms and all that stuff can't thrive. So it's gonna do so much for your energy levels, for your skin, for your vibrancy. I mean, I, I can't tell you enough. This would be the, one of the best decisions for your health that you've ever made. Even if you don't listen to anything I say about uh, supplements or working or working out or lifting, this is one thing I would recommend for anybody because we're all susceptible to cancer, we're all susceptible to disease, and this is the one thing that is easy to do. So um, again, I highly recommend this. And okay, so for the concept. Now, at the top of the video, I said that if there's a concept that you can keep in mind to help you like really understand how this works. If you're, if you're not there yet, I know that you've seen this before, so think of this. When you buy batteries, Duracell, whatever the fuck they are, doesn't matter. When you buy batteries, now 
I don't know if you're aware of it, but they're alkaline batteries. They're full of power when you buy them because they're high in alkalinity. They're an alkaline source, right? So when batteries go dead, when they lose their power, what happens? Well, I'm sure a lot of you have seen when they actually go dead and they actually secrete something. Now, what is that? That is a battery acid. So that's a prime example of going from high alkalinity to acidic, okay? So when you get it, it's full of energy, it's full of uh, power, it's, it's, it's rich and um, rich, it's a rich source of, of thriving energy and uh, power, right? And that's what you'll feel if you, you know, if you adopt more of an alkaline diet, because again, you're balancing your, your pH levels. But when it loses its alkalinity, because it doesn't, a battery doesn't have a way to like eat a fucking alkaline diet. So it doesn't have a way to like resupply it, which is what we need to do. We have control over that. So when it loses its alkalinity, it starts secreting battery acid. And I don't care where you live in the world, battery acid is bad news. So that's a prime example of just how effective and a, like something that we've all seen before. So, you know, if you're, if you're struggling with your diet, if you're struggling with, you know, learning a new uh, way to take care of better, you know, better care of your body. If you're looking for tips and tricks to, you know, really improve the, your overall, you know, health and, and well-being, this is the one thing that I would highly, highly, highly recommend and one that, you know, I've, I've seen great results from. So uh, I'd love to hear your comments. Please let me know what you think about the list that I just went through, if you guys have anything to add. And uh, please like the video, share the video, and do share the video with anybody that uh, you think would be good contributors here at the Man Corps. If you have a challenge or something that I can help with in a future video, please send me an email at themancorpproject at gmail.com. I have to run, fellas, but uh, it's been great to uh, share these tips with you. I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thank you very much. Cheers.